The term death of the author pertains to an idea from 1967 where French literary critic claims that you should take out the author's intentions, ideas and person out of their work. Say, one day George Lucas or any other famous writer, director or creator comes out as a fucking Nazi, yet had created in their lifetime most influential or beloved works of art or writing. You as the audience who are practicing the death of the author would claim that it does not matter what state of mind or opinions the author holds now or held at the time and try to simply enjoy their work that is dear to you. You claim that once the work is made public, it belongs to the public and the creator has no impact on it. Unfortunately, the death of the author idea does not simply work in real life. And with that, let's talk about that time when Battlestate Games, a developer of Escape from Tarko, DMCA bombed a content creator. For those that are not akin to Escape from Tarkov, basically the game is the ultimate high fidelity looter tactical first person shooter where literally you can make this monstrosity. Safe to say I absolutely love the idea and played the game for a while. In fact, here's what I said about the game from back in the day in this video. Still, when I look at Escape from Tarkov, I have the feeling that this would be something that I would eventually make if I were to follow off programmer's career. Currently the game is still in kind of a crowdfunding beta state, so in a way you can think of Tarko as the star citizen of FPS games, but better, at least Tarko has first gameplay and second it's pretty fun, plus it doesn't crash left and right, well not always at least. However, back in December of 2018, a fellow content creator by the name of Eroctic released a couple of videos that were concerned about account security by claiming a few things as true. Then Battlestate Games, the developers, then claimed that the information in those videos were misleading and false to a smaller or greater degree. By the end of this, of course, arguably, you can say that Eroctic may have been right. However, I'm not here to discuss that. Now, instead of taking legal Legal action, or fuck, even just talking with the creator about the false information in the videos, developers chose to go down the road of a massive venereal disease spreading cunt. Battlestate Games knew that the videos had to be taken down, and again, instead of contacting the creator to clear things up, they chose to utilize DMCA takedown system and literally nuke the poor guy's channel with 47 DMCA claims. <laughs> Fucking 47! Now, let me be clear. I'm not claiming that Eroctic was 100% right or wrong. Being the way he is, his style of presentation is very much like my own. But the problem here, to a much greater degree, for me is how the developer acted. Being a creator myself, seeing a company utilizing the DMCA takedown system to take down a video they simply don't like, well, while not criminal, is very repulsive to me. So, for those at home who don't know what the DMCA takedowns are, uh, in the case of YouTube, it's basically a system where if someone had quite literally stolen your work and presented as their own, or simply released without a proper license, uh, that's mostly relegated to movies and such, you are in your full right to utilize the system to remove said stolen content. DMCA in general is a large and broad law. So for more information, do check out more informative videos about the system as this was just a general Realization. So basically, by using the system, Battlestate Games claimed that creators' videos contain copyrighted material that belongs to them. As you may guess, it's not quite the case with game video content at all, and all claims I consider absolutely false. Basically, this case waters down to a developer not liking what the mean online personality says in his very sarcastic and mean way. So they knew that the system existed and used it to take down videos. And to add an insult to injury, they doubled down on their claims. And I quote, 
We make every possible effort to maintain the confidentiality of information entrusted to us by users, but also to maintain the most comfortable environment for communication in our community. And that is the exact reason why we believe that restricting access to Eroctic's videos was the necessary measure, a measure that we have taken quickly and decisively, because the best interest of our users had been affected. Moreover, we did not want, and we do not want this person to be associated with our game in the first place. A few days passed after the shitstorm and thanks to the Streisand effect, this situation got amplified to a level where this sort of a bullshit would not slide. Developers initially released all but two DMC claims, which were the original two videos they did not like, but ultimately even those were released, basically admitting the false nature of them. Sure, we're back at square one again. But remember that once a channel is struck with a claim, well, you get restricted and outright may lose the channel. So let's say if you're making any ad revenue, that stops and more. So the affected party gets royally boned for a while at least, while the claimant party loses nothing. Yes, they get no penalty for issuing and then removing the claims. There is no ramification for such a thing, which makes it ever more disgusting. But as for Eroctic on the other end, just like many others, he just simply stopped producing content and playing the game. And after I contacted the guy myself, he did say that he deleted the two videos even so. But now, ultimately he's back in a smaller or bigger way. It's been a year and some since then, and from time to time I still look into Tarko, so willing to return to this cool game, but I simply cannot. I hoped that I would be able to make a video, well this video, as a triumphant positive story of a developer who may have taken things quite a bit too far by shitting the bed so massively, but after realizing their actions and standing up, coming to an understanding and rebuilding bridges, putting in effort to do better, but that did not happen. I truly want to go back and enjoy Tarkov as a wonderful and unique game made by passionate team, but just like when I stated at the beginning of the video, I cannot apply Death of the Order. It in of itself is a near impossibility. I cannot ignore that after my investigation during this year and a half, developers have not come out and made a statement about the thing. Fuck, I even tried contacting them on forums, email, whatever. But not being a Russian speaking person, I doubt my inquiries would even be reaching them. The fact is that even if you think the DMCA claims were not false, it's still a massive show of big dick force against a community member, a creator that undoubtedly loves the game. Instead of being a force for good and attempting to clear things in a positive manner, they chose to wield a sledgehammer, turn an opposing viewpoint. And to this day I wonder if developers are still okay to enact such a force against anyone who disagrees with them. That's the scary and disgusting part. I cannot repeat how much it hurts me to put down Tarko as a horrible game. Not because of the gameplay or the game itself, but because of the developers simply not growing a fucking pair and admitting their wrongdoing. Instead doubling down and maintaining that they don't need someone like Eroctic, be he over the top negative or otherwise. Not being willing to contact creators and instead not only burning bridges, but calling in tactical nuke on them. Maintaining this high and mighty attitude even at the face of the cheating problems and other issues that plague the game today. I'm fucking sad that such an interesting and unique game I have to erase and never look back. God damn it, I wanted to play it again. But I'm not willing to ignore this shit. So good night, Tarko. You are too good for the company that created you.